Hey there friends, what's up? Kevin here from the MSOTD Rocks YouTube channel. Yes, I'm back to another video finally, and today I'm gonna try and figure out my thoughts on Bad Flower before they release This Is How The World Ends in September of 2021. Let's go! Before we get started though, please follow MSCT Rocks on places like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Again, we have all the content out there for you guys. Different tweets, different videos, different things like IGT videos, different live streams on Instagram, different posts, the song of the day stuff. You're going to really get in the know with everything that's going on in the scene and really expand your musical horizons. Please remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel and get these Kevin Figures Out videos. You get the different album reviews that we've done, the year-end awards, any other crazy videos we do, along with the Core Progression Podcast. We're interviewing all the great bands in rock metal, upcoming, emerging, and even some of the heavy hitters in ways that you can't even imagine, really going deep with some of their music and just some of the fun that they've had along the way. You can watch all the episodes right here on YouTube, or you can listen on Spotify Podcast and iHeartRadio. Link description below for everything, so make sure that I also want to thank our sponsor, Phoenix Fitness, for sponsoring this video. Yeah, concert are back. I'm going to Majors. I'm going to concerts like crazy. I want to make sure that I make as many as possible and don't tap out halfway through. So make sure I hit the gym, you know, lift a lot, go crazy, yeah, do a lot of cardio. But I got to make sure that I'm preparing myself enough and recovering well enough so that I can keep doing this on a nightly basis. That's where Phoenix Fitness comes in with different pre-workouts, different PCLA recovery supplements, different proteins, both AM and post-workout proteins, different creatines, different multivitamins, anything you need. You can go to their website, link description below, and at checkout, use code MSOTD to get 15% off your entire order. Enough with all the cadence and stuff, let's just get on to the video. So a bit of a background so you guys are aware of where I'm at with Bad Flower. I first thought out about the band when they released the song 30 back in 2020, and I remember seeing a lot of different mixed reception. I saw a lot of people liking the song for its different styles, different take with rock and alternative rock in there, but I also saw people dislike it for it, making it sound like, you know, this band was just whining about getting older, so they really weren't necessarily on the content. I never really dove deep into it after that because my preconceived notion always thought that Bad Flower was like this band that has more rock alternative sound that really just whined a lot, a lot like something like AJR, but for more younger millennials, early Gen Z, where AJR is more, you know, towards that Gen Z area. So I had that preconceived notion and I kind of just stood back from Bad Flower for a long time. Until I went to Rockfest in 2021 because they had their set in between Corey Taylor and Limp Bizkit and my buddy Chris really wanted to see them. So after Corey Taylor, I ran back to our campsite, drop off a sign post that Throw the Fight gave me. Again, that's a podcast band. I'm going to have them back on at some point soon. And then I end up running back stone cold with two beers before I walk back in. And I watched like the second half of the show and I got to say... I was really impressed. I was really into the show. The crowd was really into it. I really enjoyed a lot of what they had going on. So that really made me want to make this video to really figure out what my thoughts were on Bad Flower before the release of The Southern the World ends in September of 2021. So how this video goes is going to be simple. First, I'm going to listen to their music, really take a look and see what I can figure out on their musical style, see if I like it or not. Second, I'm going to take a look at their image and their gimmick, see how their image is presented and how that impacts music along with their music videos and, of course, their live music where I can finally take a look at a first-hand account for myself when it comes to live music and then take a look at their socials, how they connect with their community of fans and see how this all wraps up in their final verdict. So let's do it. So the only way to get this really going is to start listening to the music, right? So I think I have to. Let's go and talk about this. So now I listen to the music and after listening to the album OK I'm Sick, the Temper EP 30, and of course Family, the first single off of This How the World Ends, really trying to dive deep into it, I really noticed something about Bad Flower and when it comes down to it they really have this mix of like indie rock, alternative rock and just more this rock, hard rock kind of sound to really bring in more of this well-rounded and dynamic sound that can really go in a lot of different directions. So. This is going to be interesting going through because there could be a lot of stuff that I like, there could be a lot of stuff that I dislike. I mean, it all really depends upon the dynamics of the sound and how it works out. So looking at some of the songs that really hit on me, especially from OK I'm Sick, take a look at X on X because just the energy behind it had me reminiscent of like Green Day's Ready, Fire, Aim from their 2012 album, Father of All. Yeah, you guys know where I'm going to go with that. I just don't want to get demonetized from YouTube or like, you know, if I start getting monetized for saying something like that. 
However, the guitar tone will say this like Queens of the Stone Age vibe, but just the energy that was behind this more rock oriented vibe and some of Josh's vocals having this little more of a raspier tone going through. The energy was incredibly high in the song and I was really getting into it. This was this is a really good song. I'm like, man, live, this is freaking nuts. Die was another one that I liked because it had this more anthemic rock style that used electronic backing to create this great build with this more fun rock track and the bass transitions that they have on this track really make this song really stand out for the best. It's those bass transitions, you know, do -do 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 on the bass. Yeah, that's where this track really shined. Take a look at the song Girl as well because it felt like they mixed this like 2000s British rock guitar style in with this flow of Southern rock and just the way that everything flowed with the tone of the guitar versus the flow of the song and with the way that Josh's vocals are presented, this song was a lot of fun to listen to. It was really easy to get into and it was just really enjoyable to just dive deep into. Man, the dynamics that this band could really go with and blending different styles around that rock alternative indie style is fantastic. So now there's some stuff where personally, I really didn't connect well with the sound, but I absolutely respect what they did on here. Take a look at a song like Heroin because the song really drags out with the vocals bleeding into each section of the song to make it really feel like it's just slowly dragging on. It's all one congruent thing. It's not really sectioned off, but also congruent. It just feels like it's one long run on sentence. However, the melancholic low riff in the feel of the song really kept the emotion being high on Heroin. So I absolutely have massive respect for how they constructed this song, though it really didn't strike a chord with me personally. Another song that's similar to Heroin that does this is the song 24. When you take a look at it, the vocals really don't change to really create this more melodic slow build, which I do understand in the song, but it just kind of, again, makes the song feel like that run on sentence. But then the melancholic low riff from the guitar and the melodic drumming create this overall depressive feel that the song needs to really thrive. So I was all in for this one as well in the respect game. When I took a look at Daddy, it sounded like what I heard on AFI's Bodies album when they did Dulcera. It was like AFI mixed with Smashing Pumpkins. This is what Bad Flower did on Daddy. And when it came to that kind of style of the song, especially with the chorus having the more alt rock bass and that feel of the more fluidity, it felt like it kind of ran together a little bit once again. But seeing how that worked out and seeing the power that it had behind it, I absolutely respect the movie because they took that newer AFI feel, really put it with their own style and really made it pop. There were some songs on this album of Bill Camp Sick, I'm like, uh, maybe not for me. Promise Me is one of those songs because the softer plucking electric guitar and melodic vocals create more of this alt rock song that lacked this great amount of energy and fullness that really could have made the song hit a lot more powerful. It just had this more empty feeling behind it that I really couldn't get into. Murder Games had a very melodic start with the lower guitar and hard snare to really drop the depressive vocals that Josh was going to have on this, which I totally understand, do not get me wrong. But the song really feels like it kind of runs into itself in the fact that half of the runtime, it just kind of like goes through the intro and it's just, oh uh, man. It was a rough one to really go through for me. Just the long intro really kind of took the steam out of me. And then Cry at the end of OK, I'm Sick, it does a lot of the same thing that Murder Games does with that long, melodic build to the entire song. And it really kind of takes up like half the song at this point where trying to get into it and it was a six minute song with that long, slow build for three whole minutes. Not gonna lie, it was kind of putting me to sleep. So I was like, okay, I guess for Bad Flower, it depends on the song. But when it comes to trying so many different things, I really respect what they're doing here. I do want to take a look at 30 and the latest single, Family, specifically to really kind of, you know, bring this musical section to a proper close. So when it came to 30, when I went deeper into it, it kind of threw me off a little bit, which I wasn't expecting. So when I dove deep into it, the lighthearted white stripe style rip to open up really brings you to the song with whispered vocal scream, more of this like depressive sound. I'm like, okay, this is definitely interesting. But then we're moving to something that's more like that 2000s heavier alternative rock music. And Josh's vocals are getting a little bit more distorted, a little bit more angular, a little more raspy in that clean sense. And the energy is driving up with still more of this melodic bass to it. When I really looked at him, like, this is really showing that anger and that kind of depressive feel that comes together when it comes to aging and realizing that your youth is gone. You've got all these weird problems that you don't think that you should have, like waking up with a sore back, not, you know, brushing your teeth like three times, getting something stuck in your teeth, just all these different random little things that happen as you get older. Seeing the dynamics of this track and really building up to that anger of aging really comes through on 30 where I'm like, I can see where people brought in that more whining mentality, but 
I think the overall emotion really gets brought out here, even though I don't associate with it, I could really pick up on it. Family, I'm not gonna lie, had that more melodic, longer build that really took up half the song on this one. But really when I went through it, I get it because you're really setting the stage for this broken family and really seeing how this broken apartness can really affect somebody. But then when you get into the second half of the song, the payoff is completely there and I'm all for it. This is because the drums get more Philly with a more melodic style in the back and the heavier guitar riffs just really work out with the vocals having that more scratchy tone. It takes the song honestly to the next level to really bring forward that feeling of the pain a broken family can cause. So overall, when it comes to how I feel about Bad Flowers music, I'm gonna go completely neutral on this because I absolutely respect how dynamic of a sound they have, mixing different alt rock, indie rock, and different other things in rock into their music, which gives them a wide range to work with and a lot to actually play around with to create these different moods, emotions, and sounds within their songs. When it comes to me, I like the stuff that's a little more raw, a little bit more heavy, a little more fast paced at the same time as well, like X on X. But I absolutely respect when they try and bring in some of these softer, more indie, more alt tones, but they really also hammer home the message of the song in those instrumentals. It really does a great job to bring that out and seeing how that all worked out in family, seeing the both sides of it, especially from the first half to the second half, I think they do a great job with that. However, with having that dynamic of a sound, especially with more of an alt and indie days, which I'm kind of really shying away from, it's harder for me to really jump into those a lot as well as it is to some of these other songs. So it really kind of depends upon the song for me with Bad Flowers. So I'm going to go neutral because there's some songs that are here, there's some songs that are here, and there's some songs that are here. But that's what you get when you have such a dynamic style when you're blending different things with indie, alt, and rock music together. So now it's time to go to the image and the gimmick of Bad Flower to really take a look at how their image is presented and how it impacts their music in both how they look, what their music video is like, and how their live setting is. Take a look at their image right when I looked at it, especially with the cover for This is How the World Ends. First thing I'm thinking is this looks like a group of four guys that I could easily see at a local coffee shop in like some sort of art-centric district in the middle of any major city here in America. You're just taking a look closer, you're getting more pastel colors. It kind of looks baggy, so it kind of looks dirty, but also crisp and clean at the exact same time. So really the kind of idea is to bring it out and whenever I see people like that in Milwaukee and I hang out with people like that, they typically have more of that indie alt rock vibe to them when it comes to their music. So bringing that style with Bad Flower, it does absolutely work. Then you take a look at the promo stuff they had for 30 and the 30 video itself, which I'll get into later. Josh has this like pinkish purple hair. So you're seeing more of this expressive tone as well, which is also very prevalent and indie and alt rock music. So it does make a lot of sense that their look really kind of portrays a lot with the current take on the image of the music scene that they're in. So I totally understand this. And initially I'm like, okay, this necessarily isn't my style, so I'll pull away. Music video time kind of brought a different light to this. So when it comes to the music video, I'm gonna focus on three. The first one to focus on is Ghost, because when you start out, you see Josh in a car with a tube connected to the exhaust essentially trying to kill himself through carbon monoxide poisoning. You see him look at a picture of a girl and you're wondering what's going on. It could be the love of his life and what happened. And then as you go through the whole entire video with the song having more of this depressive tone to it with more of this alt kind of heavy emotional style, you're really seeing this darker, more shadow play style really work out in the music video to bring forth these deeper, darker emotional things. And you're seeing something of Josh sort of creating like this fake wedding for the girl that he loved. but passed away at some point and feeling the emotion of missing her. And I don't I really connected with this one. When you listen to music and you watch the music video really connect this together, this was incredibly well done. I thought this was amazing. I mean, the artistry behind this was incredible. So now jumping into 30, and when you start with the video, man, it just looks all black and white. You're seeing people sing happy birthday to Josh, but he is not happy. He is depressed and he is angry because turning 30, he's getting old. I totally understand that. And then as the video goes on, you know, color comes in, you're seeing Josh kind of have this more calm demeanor to him, but you're seeing this anger build up. And then when the song really gets in the fold with Josh's more raspy or clean vocals to bring forth the scratchy anger that comes with getting older, you're seeing his movements have a little more of an erratic style to him in this one kind of like long shot style video. And I gotta say, it absolutely works out to perfection as well. We're getting the inside look at Josh really struggling with the fact that he's getting older and trying to, you know, potentially not only just hold on to the good times of his youth, but not to fall victim to just all this, you know, sedativeness and just complacency at the exact same time as well that comes with getting older. 
I totally can understand and see the Iraq movements really put this out there. Now I gotta go to family because the first half of the video really seen this more darker, more shadow play tone like we saw in Ghost, really get more of this darker, depressive vibe to it. And we're seeing times where Josh is looking forward at the camera where there's home videos playing in the background and you're hearing the depressive tone and sometimes he's looking, sometimes he's not, but this really gives the idea of how this family once was tight but now it is broken and it is really hard to try and associate with that, really hard to connect back to that because you miss out on so much. But then when the second half comes in, when the instrumentals get fuller and Josh's vocals get raspier and scratchier and a lot more emotional, we're seeing different erratic movements on screen as well from Josh. And I absolutely love the move here as well because we're seeing how that anger and how that just not happiness is really coming forward and you're seeing how his mind is jumping through this and trying to come to terms with this broken family through his body language. This was really well done. The artistry on their music videos is fantastic, I can't lie. So, now I have to go to their live show, and yes, I was able to see them live at Rockfest. Well, let's be fair, I probably saw the second half of their set. I did notice two major things, and the things I noticed was when Badflower was playing a little more of those Energy X songs, think X on a X, the crowd was really being able to get into it, really moving around, and really feeding off the energy that was coming from the guys on stage. That's something that I'm huge on when it comes to any kind of live setting. You guys know me. I love jumping into mosh pits. Bad Flower is not gonna incite one, so I have to find a way to enjoy the show some other way. But seeing the energy of the crowd, feeling the energy of the crowd, and seeing the band on stage, especially through some of those you know, faster paced, more kind of like fun songs that I would get into, easily makes sense. Now we went to some other songs that had a little more of those deeper emotional connections, more of that alt indie vibe, similar to like Ghost. Yeah, the band really took more of this like drawn back style to it, and just the power that they had to control the emotion of the fans really let this style out there and really, you know, put their emotions on stage and also transform them to us so that we can feel those emotions and feel our own as well. I thought that was incredibly well done. It was very similar to what I experienced back in 2017 when I saw Breaking Benjamin play an acoustic set. They did this really well and Bad Flower does this as well. Plus they ended with Family, which is the first time they ever played live and let me tell you, yeah. They did that one incredibly well. Everyone stayed for that a little encore before Limp Biscuit went on stage. I mean, you, you, there was no space in that little venue to go up and uh, try and, you know, get closer. Bad Flower Live, I looked at that and I thought, would I want to go see them on October 3rd, 2021 when they're going to be in Milwaukee? Yeah, I think I'm going to. So when it comes to the image and the gimmick, is it something I can get behind? And this is all 100% yes, where their image isn't 100% necessarily what I would go for in terms of my kind of music. However, it does fit in with their style of alt rock, indie rock, and rock music being blended together. Their music video and their artistry is fantastic. Pull out a lot more meaning and messaging in this song for you to really get connected to it. And then their live show, they really know how to command the crowd and have a good time doing it, whether it's a more emotional song or a more fun song, whatever it might be. So this is fantastic. I'm all in. So now when it comes to the fan engagement community of fans section, I'm going to take a look at their online presence to really gain a uh, more perspective of this. Take a look at Facebook, they have about 110,000 people that are following their page. Twitter's about 36,000 and Instagram has about 85,000, so that's pretty good. And when I took a look at their different social pages, taking a look at Facebook, I pretty much expected what I got. And it was gonna be, every single post was gonna have more of this multimedia setting where it's gonna be a link to an article, a link to a video, a video itself, a photo, whatever it might be. So you're gonna get more of what you want, but it's kinda like a business transaction because they're posting certain things for you to check out, they're posting different things about tour, about the new album, and I totally understand that. And that's kinda like Facebook, it's like the mothership, so I get that. The thing that I wasn't the biggest fan of with their Facebook was the comment section. And it wasn't with the fans' comments, because the fans' comments were rather than making fans interact with each other, but I never saw the band interact with any fans in the comments. And that's something that I really look for, because that can drive a lot of different fan engagement as well with the band. So I'm like, okay, not necessarily the best. Let's go to Twitter. Twitter, man. Bad Flowers Twitter is out of their socials, the least followed their socials, but it is the absolute best. They post different random fun things on there. Again, they'll post some things about brand new albums, tours, whatever it might be, but they post some fun photos as well, some fun wacky videos, but it's how they respond to other people is fantastic. They have this more like passive aggressive humor as well. I mean, one of my favorite tweets they said is, if you buy a ticket to our show, there's a good chance you'll see Bad Flower play Bad Flower song. They kind of just have fun with it. And I love to see that because you're seeing their own personality come out in this. And that's what I want to see on Twitter. That's what I want to see on social media. I'm a big fan of their Twitter page, so definitely go give it a follow. When it came to Instagram though, man, I don't know. When I looked at their posts, they only had five posts up and they have almost 85, 86,000 followers. I'm like, for five posts, what the actual hell? 
and they were all in regards to the new album coming out in September of 2021 and just one little crazy shit post. But it made me think, did they delete everything out in terms of like a publicity thing to gain more attention for this album, similar to what Ronnie Radke did at the end of 2020 going into 2021? If you guys know what the case behind that, please put that in the comments, but I do want to see if that was the case because if it is, that totally makes sense. Take a look at the comments though. Again, we're getting a lot of comments from fans as well, a lot of different engagement, but on the band page, I saw no engagement for Bad Flower whatsoever. I'm like, man. Again, that could really garner a lot of attention. So let's actually check out Josh's Instagram because this might give us a little bit of a better perspective. Josh's Instagram, it has its ups and downs. I'm not gonna lie. We're seeing a lot more of Josh's personality, a lot more different pictures. A lot of them contain his cat as well. So we're seeing a lot more of his personality come out. And I totally understand that. And I'm not gonna lie, he does comment back on some people on some of his posts as well, which I totally understand. But the ones I checked out, this is where the concern came for me, where it was people that have more of a larger following that are blue check mark or verified on Instagram that's in the music scene that were the ones that he was responding to. I never really saw him respond to a lot of fans, which did make concern. Granted, his comments were unique, so we weren't getting like some kind of like just like standard thank you, thank you, thank you, whatever it might be. But I wish he would connect with the fans a little bit more by commenting back and stuff because that means so much of fans that could just garner a larger influence, not only online for you, but also as you go forward in your career. Take a look at Joey from Varsity. Again, he is the gold standard on this and I'm gonna keep bringing it up. So when it comes to their connection to community fans, I gotta go neutral because I'm not the biggest fan of their Instagram. Facebook, I totally understand what they're doing with it, but I wish they would definitely comment more. Twitter is definitely a place to be to follow Bad Flower, and I absolutely love their Twitter account, so I'm gonna go neutral. So now time to give my overall verdict on if I like Bad Flower or not when I figure it out, and it is, man, this one's tough. Think about their music. There's a lot of stuff I like about it. There's a lot of stuff I respect about it with them blending different indie, alt, and uh, rock stuff in their music, and really bringing out the emotion of a lot of these songs that they're trying to portray really works out well. But it's just the fact that they're really blending indie and alt rock in with rock music that I'm really not that particularly close with. That's where I'm having some trouble on this one. So not necessarily fully Bad Flowers fault, but it's something where I'm just not connected with their music. The image though, again, when you take a look at them, it's definitely not something that I'm gonna associate with because it's associated a lot more with that like indie rock and alt rock style, which I'm more, you know, punk rock, hard rock, metalcore. However, the music videos are absolutely fantastic with the artistry to really portray a lot of the emotion in these songs in a completely powerful light. Again, Ghost, 30, and Family really show this. And then live shows, man, I want to see them play in Milwaukee on October 3rd, 2021. So, and I've already seen them play, you know, half a show once and I was encapsulated by it. So their image is incredibly spot on for me. I'm totally into it. Their social game though, again, it just depends on the platform. I would definitely follow them on Twitter for their more passive aggressive fun humor. Facebook, again, it's more just that kind of transaction kind of stuff. Instagram could use a good amount of work, especially on the fan comment side, so I'm neutral on that. So my overall figuring out, do I like them? I'm gonna call it a dynamic, yes. And the reason is because I really get down to music videos. I really love their live performance alone. I can't even see them live. And when it comes to the music, it all depends upon the style of song. Even some of the songs that are softer, more indie and alt rock based that I'm not necessarily fully into, I absolutely respect how they pull this off to really put forward the emotion on these songs. Am I gonna get fully into them? Not necessarily, but can I respect them? Absolutely. So yeah, I'm gonna go with a dynamic yes on this one where it can fluctuate more between yes and neutral, but right now it's in that yes category. So I'm gonna go with yes and I can't wait to really see what happens when this out of the world end comes out on September 24th, 2021. So on that note, that's going to be for me today, guys. Thank you for watching Kevin Figures Out Bad Flower. If you like this video, again, give me a like. Comment if uh, you can answer that question with the whole entire Instagram thing. Or comment what you think about Bad Flower as well. Let me know. And please remember to like, share, subscribe, everything we have. Again, link description below. Thank you, Phoenix Fitness, for sponsoring this video. Let's end with the hat flip. I missed it. Oh, well. See ya! Ow.